What up, Half Leaders? Welcome to my channel. We're at Meadowbank. This is Meadowbank on the east bank of Demerara. We're actually looking at Banks DIH, their parking garage in the previous video. So that's where they're located for reference. That's the Banks DIH Thirst Park location where they have their bottling plant and their beverage warehouse and distribution center. And straight ahead here, this is National Hardware. National Hardware is of course the uh, government of Guyana owned hardware store. They have a location in Georgetown on Water Street, but this is of course their um, super center. National Hardware being similar to Home Depot and Rona and so on. So, and here on East Bank, road I want to show you some of the developments that are happening along the East Bank which you don't get to see very often but a lot of the oil industry has moved into this location these houses have been renovated for um, new residences new residents this is Snappins cabins it's another location there are a number of companies operating out of this location there's a, a billboard there showing you the companies let's see if I can pick some up this is park rain rain in rent a tent GL IRP in Sapins these guys I think make cabins out of what seems to be shipping containers based on just my observation these are probably temporary um, buildings that can be used let's say on construction sites so they're located here on the east bank and the other side is uh, Rahman's Park and Banks' own, uh, what is it, Digyar Park. Right, I think I showed you the location of Digyar Park and Rahman's Park, Rahman's Park in previous videos. Well, we're going past them again today, passing on the opposite side of the road. So, these two uh, closed communities or restricted communities have a history in Guyana. They're some of the first uh, gated communities in Guyana. Degar Park was built by Peter Degar for Banks DIH community employees, a community for Banks DIH employees and so on. And of course, Thirst Park also has executive residences on location. And Rahman Park, Rahman was the other beverage um, industry tycoon in Guyana and he built Rahman Spark for his um, community of employees so Rahman Spark and the Gar Park side by side here on the East Bank I haven't done an internal tour of these parks recently we'll get to it eventually but here on the western side of the road this is went Western Scientific Company they have their location here and I'm saying all this is happening recently because a lot of these companies have come up in the last uh, five years so Western Scientific their medical equipment supplies clinical laboratory equipment supplies scientific laboratory equipment supplies analytical laboratory equipment supplies and testing measurement equipment supplies laboratory for furniture and so on so they're located here, Park Rain has a billboard here and in the next, okay so like I said on the other side that's Rahman's Park 
we've seen a, a video of Rahman's Park on the outside in previous in previous videos I've shown Rahman's Park but on the opposite side is this meadow bank right that's meadow bank and this has always been uh, exclusive housing right this one is called Houston Estate it's a gated community right Houston Estate and beyond that gate is residential housing for I think in the past it used to be um, executive executives of the sugar industry sugar estate right so these houses were built for the top brass in the sugar industry and as you know all of this land that has been reclaimed for residences east of this location that is in Houston used to be sugar estate land that is cultivated with sugar cane in all the videos I've made about Houston and about the bypass road the Heroes Highway that cuts through it cuts through Houston Estates which was a sugar plantation this is the entrance to Rahman's Park right so Rahman's Park Houston Estates Digar Park these were all gated communities built for the executive class in Diana that's CEOs in the industries the sugar industry the beverage industry and so on so this is what remains of the sugar dynasty a lot of these uh, estates have now been converted to private ownership I don't know if the sugar industry still holds owns all of this property but as you can see they've been refurbished that is the houses have been painted and now I think there are new residents living in it we're approaching Houston village this is Houston village on the east bank and what we're looking at is this is Slumberger Slumberger is a oil and gas equipment supplier traded on the New York Stock Exchange. I remember actually buying Slumberger stock back in the 90s. It was one of the much talked about companies on the US Stock Exchange. They're now located here where in fact it used to be a hardware store. Remember there was a Gaffour's hardware store. Their major hardware store was located here. Now, of course, that has been converted into oil and gas property. And these are ships. The Amaro River is just beyond the line of buildings. And what you can see are cranes and the, the uh, upper deck of ships beyond the line of buildings. And that's Slumberger. It's a major equipment supplier in the oil and gas industry here on the East Bank. And the other side is, of course, Houston Village. As we approach Eccles, we're going to pass through Houston Village to get to Eccles on the East Bank. Now, it's about 6 a.m. on a Thursday morning. Or is it Wednesday? I can lose track of the days now, but this is what the East Bank Road now looks like at 6 a.m. It's a morning rush hour, but it's actually reduced compared to what used to be morning rush hour traffic. Houston Secondary School. So this is reduced compared to what used to be. It's kind of shore base here on the East Bank. 
yeah this is this is reduced traffic compared to what used to happen here on say, on a weekday morning but since the bypass the Heroes Highway has opened a lot of the traffic into Georgetown is now moved over to the east and this is what remains just wanted to give you a little taste a little update of life on the east bank and how it's affected by the new bypass road so typically at 6 a.m. in the morning there would be dense traffic for the next three or four hours from